Postural control is not about breaking structure. It's not about breaking breathing. It's not about that type of stuff. What it basically is about is postural control is dominating and controlling what we did our entire lives in order to track objects and look at them. And when we do so, we prohibit the body or prohibit the mind and the eyes from tracking objects and we also manipulate the center mass. So working with our training partner, what we're doing is, is that, can you, can you see this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you under my spell? So I'm moving this back and forth and back and forth. Just follow it with your eyes, okay? Follow it with your eyes. Follow it with your eyes. Follow it with your eyes. Can you follow your eyes up here? Yeah. A baby can't see it. Follow it with your eyes. Follow it with your eyes. Follow it with your eyes. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Maybe out of one eye, right? You can't see it out of that other eye. You can't see that. Right. When we start to... There. There. When we control posture, we control eyes. When we control eyes, we control the brain because then it only is able to process what we allow it to process. When we add impacts into it, we panic the brain because the, pan the brain can't see what's happening. Stand in a dark room and have something make noise behind you you don't expect. You will freak out. The reason is, is because your eyes can't see it so your brain starts to draw conclusions. When your brain starts drawing conclusions, you start making mistakes especially in combat. Postural control is about controlling the ability of the eyes to be able to look around. Once we control that, we control what we can do to it with impacts. Postural control is also controlling the center mass. Remember I said that as babies, we're all wiggly and we move around because we don't have internal support structure. So we can't control our center mass over our low bearing area. So when we control posture, remember, the neck is the first muscles that really develop in order for the eyes to be able to track objects. So when we control this, we start to control the center mass. Turn this way. You can see the center mass is moving back and forth. So controlling it and pushing it over creates a control of his posture. It's not structure breaking, it's moving center mass outside of the load bearing area. Now, he's got compensational movements going on. He's dampening. So, how do we most effectively control posture? Stand up. Go ahead. I'm gonna put all the force I can on you. Okay? Come right now. Do it. He's a bigger guy than me. I can't do that one. He, before, before it even happened, he said he can't do it. A couple of reasons he can't do it. First off, we've got, no, not, not up there. What it is, is that we have a point of rotation here mm -hmm. and we have all this weight back behind it and you are trying to lift What's this it? point. Yep. When I'm here, you get your body underneath it and then you use this as a point of rotation and your head comes up around it, mm -hmm. okay? So once you're bent over, bend your knees and come up under it, right? That's what you move since you were a child. Once you bring your head down here, there's nowhere for your body to go because this, there's no point of rotation. The point of rotation is out here. Mm -hmm. It's basically a third class lever that you're trying to pull up here while oh, the point of rotation is out here. So I'd have to go. Exactly. But, but the more I control it, the more it won't happen. Pure postural control is there. You see what I can do once I can control the posture. He doesn't see this coming. He doesn't see this coming. He doesn't see that coming. He doesn't see that coming. He doesn't see it. This is why we want to control posture, you okay? Yeah. Once we tie up here and I move down there, I've basically taken everything from him because he can't see what's up here. His body won't want to see what's up here. Then I'll move down there. Once I tie up, and I transition to there. Yeah, he can see this up here. You can throw knees, but he can't see this up here, which is where we want to attack. He can't see this grab over here and the equilibrium move. He can't see it. That's what postural control is. People talk about breaking structure, which is fine, but breaking structure is completely different 
Breaking structure is breaking the internal support structure that builds the ability of the body to stand up against gravity. So I can kick the legs, I can do those different things. Breaking structure has very little to do with center mass. It's more about breaking the body. I'm controlling center mass. I'm controlling the posture of him. The moment I get him off to the side, everything that he does now is disadvantaged. And the reason is because center mass is outside the load bearing area. So every time he tries to fight me, he moves in such a way that gives me more control every time he comes back over. So when you grab a hold of somebody, pull them off to the side. Now you can see that I don't pull this way. I pull that way. I lift and I pull up here because I'm creating power going down that way. That if I want to pull him, I'm there. I'm bringing that up and over. Control the posture using your entire body. Do not control the posture like this. Why can't I control it? Control the posture moving up into here. You can grab the hair, control the posture getting up here and moving it. Yeah, I've opened this up, but I've opened it up to there and I'm still controlling it. He can't see what's gonna happen. And now, since he can't see what's gonna happen, he's blinded. He is now reliant upon the internal support structure and the vestibular system in order to get equilibrium back because he can't see it anymore. It's a very complex thing that we talked about. Spine is a very complex thing. Postural control, he can't track what I'm doing, and then it allows me to manipulate his equilibrium because I can move his center mass. But it also takes away his vision. Once his vision starts to go, he's left with an internal support structure and a vestibular system. Now it's a little bit harder for him to stand up. In the beginning of these videos on human equilibrium, we talked about a guy with no legs and a guy with vertigo, very different things. A guy with no eyes and a guy with vertigo, very different things. The reason is, is because if you take somebody that's blind, they can still see because they have their vestibular system and their internal support structure. You take somebody that has no legs, you give them their eyes and their vestibular system, and they can still balance and move around and shift their weight back and forth on their center mass. Give them vertigo, take away their vestibular system, and they can't stand up. So what we want to do is, is we want to continually attack that point. We want to move the body in order that we can get there. Remove elements of those equilibrium components in order to control it. So when you work on postural control, get up there, but don't, come here, don't stay here and think you're going to accomplish work. The body down here is too strong around this point of rotation to accomplish work. You've got to move to different points and make new levers in order to do it. Now I've got a completely different lever and a completely different level of control just by creating a point of rotation with my body. Versus, come back up, this is where mechanical control comes in. Versus this, fight me. Yeah, a little bit different there. Think about mechanics, think about how you move, think about how you grow, how you see things, how you track objects, how you keep your center mass above your load bearing area. If you think about those things, postural control and then breaking structure become very easy to do.